Normal words, but a horse guy. Can we please stop this? You just asked for specifically that. I mean, look, I think he has a point. Bojack does use normal words, and he is also a horse guy. I mean, when you're right, you're right. In all seriousness, this Family Guy joke kind of made waves back in October 2019, coincidentally just one week before season six of Bojack premiered. And I get it, it sure does seem like the most base level observation Family Guy could make about Bojack Horseman. Which honestly, I kind of find funny on its own. Like, don't even try to parody the show. What's this one about? A horse guy saying regular words? But, and hear me out here, what if I told you that Family Guy and BoJack Horseman have more in common than you realize? Now obviously they are incredibly different shows. They have vastly different styles of humor, different episode and seasonal structures, they have different goals as adult animated comedy series, but at their core, there is one super specific and super important commonality, and it all has to do with their protagonist's relationship to sitcoms. And hey, if you're a fan of my BoJack Horseman analysis, you should consider checking out my Patreon. I've recently started releasing BoJack audio commentaries exclusive to that platform. Basically an audio track you can line up while watching the show to hear my takes and comments on the series in real time, conveniently located on a private podcast RSS feed. I've released three episodes so far and will drop a new one every week until we finish the series, and then you can help me decide what I do commentary for next. Tiers start as low as $1, and I've also got other big plans for the Patreon, including a patron-only Discord server, and sneak peeks at some of my plans for the upcoming year. Today, I want to specifically shout out our top tier patron, Mace. Thank you so much, Mace. I couldn't do this without the support of viewers like you. Patreon is the best way to support me directly, and I can't thank you enough for watching. Okay, so ultimately this is a video about BoJack Horseman, Peter Griffin, and the way sitcoms shaped their worldview, and how both of these TV series can take this exact same kernel of an idea and build something entirely different and unique from it. First, let's talk about BoJack. The cold open of the very first episode really lays out the most important groundwork for what this show is trying to do. First, we get a look at BoJack's former sitcom, Horsin' Around, before he starts to talk about not only the show, but his relationship to it, and how even though real life isn't like this, he pines for the prediction predictability and structure of a sitcom where you know no matter what happens at the end of 30 minutes everything's gonna turn out okay. This really sets the stage for not only Bojack's mindset, but for the series itself. How, despite technically being a sitcom, it won't operate under those typical sitcom rules. It's framing itself as the real life alternative here. And as we'll go over, this is illustrated over and over in the series. Now let's take a peek at Family Guy. I'm going to mostly be looking at the earliest era of the show because that's what I'm most familiar with. But as far as what Family Guy is about, this is something that the homie Toonrific Tariq really helped me realize through covering the show on our podcast and through his great Family Guy videos, Peter Griffin is essentially a character who was raised by old school sitcom TV dads. The Archie Bunkers, the Ralph Cramdens from shows like The Honeymooners. You know, bang, zoom, straight to the moon. He was just using space travel as a metaphor for beating his wife. And Peter is now attempting to live his life and raise a family through the lessons and values instilled in him by those old sitcoms. It's why so many episodes begin with the family on the couch watching TV together. It's why there's a TV in the Family Guy logo. Here's Tariq's breakdown of the Family Guy theme song. But just off the first line, it's Peter and Lois asking, why aren't things like they used to be? Where did all of the old school TV dads go? What happened to all of the values that we grew up on? Well, lucky for us, there's somebody who still lives by those values. I think Family Guy is saying that a lot of the values that we grew up on are really toxic and when applied to your actual family would not fly. Man, this is actually the second time I've used this clip from Tariq's video in one of my own videos. I gotta start paying that dude royalties. Actually, wait, hold up. Hey, look, if you wanted a higher rate, you should have negotiated a better deal. But seriously, go watch Tariq's video on what Family Guy is about. It is actually one of my all-time favorites. So Tariq absolutely nails this read, that the theme song itself forecasts the entire idea behind the show. What did happen to those good old-fashioned values on which we used to rely? Well, the answer is that many of them were not good values. But Peter is a character who still tries to live his life through those values. In Bojack's case, it has a bit more to do with his own arrested development. Well, Bojack's stunted too. He got famous in his 20s, so he's gonna be in his 20s forever. After you get famous, you stop growing because you don't have to. On top of this, he spent nine years of his life working on Horse and Around. It was actually the most consistent and stable environment he'd ever had in his entire life due to his parents being generally, uh, what's the word? Uh, 
bad. So many of the lessons most instilled in Bojack over his life were from his fake TV family, a real departure from his real awful family. Unfortunately, as this show illustrates, sitcoms are not real life. Real life has actual stakes and real consequences, but so often we see Bojack trying to use those sitcom tropes and concepts to repair and build actual relationships. In Bojack's third episode, Prickly Muffin, Bojack is dealing with the very real issues plaguing his former TV daughter, Sarah Lynn. Rather than getting her the help she needs, he initially enables her, allowing her to crash and party at his place, all while he tries to emulate their relationship from TV. All of Bojack's attempts to connect with Sarah Lynn parallel moments in Horsin' Around. Who wants chocolate chip pancakes? I do, I do. Who wants chocolate chip pancakes? I do. This is showcased further later in the episode when Bojack's hospitality towards Sarah Lynn reaches a breaking point and he tries to hatch a plan to fix everything. The kids on Horse and Around didn't need boundaries. All they needed was some good old-fashioned love. Bojack, this is not a TV show, okay? This is real life. Rather than addressing the actual issues, Bojack just takes Sarah Lynn for a fun day out at Santa Monica Pier, assuming that spending completely unrelated father-daughter time with her will somehow magically set the boundaries he needs. Instead, as Bojack tries to live out his sitcom moments, real life continues to sneak back into the picture. I got a feeling everything's gonna be okay. Uh-huh. Hey, did you hear Kazaz got cancer? The show is constantly illustrating, even this early in its run, that this world is not a typical sitcom world. At the end of 30 minutes, your problems are still going to be there. And for Bojack, they will bleed out into the following episodes. But Bojack trucks along with his sitcom ending, giving Sarah Lynn his TV Guide Award, thinking this grand gesture is the resolution this episode needs. <sighs> What are you doing? Shh, just let the credits roll, let the credits roll. This moment is particularly divorced from reality. Though the episode has a full seven minutes remaining, this is where Bojack is hoping it ends, with a credit roll after a sweet moment between characters. And Peter does this kind of stuff in Family Guy all the time. I want us to have one of those father-son moments, like on TV, you know, where we hug and the music goes, la la la. Thanks, boys, just like that. This episode is essentially all about Peter trying to connect to his father, whom he didn't seem to have ever had a real relationship with. He expects that now, after his dad's retirement, they'll finally be able to bond. Instead, his dad doubles down on his awfulness, throwing jabs at Lois for not being Catholic and being generally awful, hating retired life. Peter tries to continually win his father's favor with grand gestures, the same kind you might see on a sitcom, only for each one to go wrong in its own way. First, he gets him a job managing the toy factory where he works, which back fires tremendously as it just enables his abusive behavior in this workplace. So Peter's next grand gesture is to kidnap the Pope to introduce to his father to try and earn his love and respect. Peter, what is the Pope doing here? Relax, honey. I just hijacked his bubble car so we can convince my dad I'm a good guy. Pretty emblematic of that grand gestures will fix everything attitude, right? Of course, even this backfires given his dad's stubbornness. So I guess you were wrong about me, huh, Dad? I was wrong, all right. Stand by, boys. I was wrong about you. Peter's dad would rather denounce the Pope than admit that his son is a good, respectable person. Wild. Of course, Family Guy still gives us these kinds of heartwarming, heartstring-tugging moments at the end of these episodes, even if they choose to subvert them while getting there. Obviously, Peter never has to actually reconcile with the fact that he kidnapped the Pope in this one, and he connects with his father in a way. Bojack, on the other hand, chooses to really revel in the lasting consequences of these kinds of actions, both for the characters and the world they live in. In the sixth episode, our A story is a D story, in an attempt to impress and win over Diane's love, Bojack gets drunk and literally steals the D from the Hollywood sign. Realizing he could get in serious trouble for it, he spends most of the episode covering his tracks, and after the D is destroyed en route to its return to the Hollywood Hills, rather than reset everything the following episode as a normal sitcom would, in Bojack Horseman, the D actually remains gone for the rest of the entire series. Every character seamlessly begins to refer to Hollywood as Hollywoo, a pretty clear illustration of this show's relationship to sitcoms and sitcom tropes. Ultimately, both of these series and these main characters are sending up sitcoms in their own way. Family Guy does it with a bit more reverence, since at its core it is still more of a traditional sitcom. While they poke and jab and make fun, it's a show that sits on the shoulders of what came before. Their countless references to older sitcoms obviously only work because their writers and audience are so familiar with those shows and the tropes that came with them. This is pretty perfectly highlighted in season 4's The Father the 
Son and the Holy Fonz, where Peter chooses to form his own religion, and the figure he opts to worship is Arthur Fonzarelli himself. The Fonz be with you. And also with you. Let us A. A. In a lot of ways, TV does take the place of religion in some people's lives. It's a weekly telling of stories and allegories that everyone shares together, and then they can talk about them afterwards. Peter is clearly far more familiar with these old sitcoms than he is with any other form of religion. It's the North Star he's used to guide him through life. And this is obviously, though differently, very true for Bojack as well. Because of the lack of stability in his life and the abusive nature of his parents, he ultimately used the lessons he learned on Horse and Around as a tool to guide him through life, which led to his own massive issues in coping with the actual conflicts he was faced with. After his best friend and showrunner Herb Kazaz was unfairly fired, Bojack not only didn't have his back, but didn't even call him for 20 years afterwards. He didn't reach out until he found out that Herb was dying of cancer. Before Herb dies, they do spend a lovely afternoon together. They catch up, they laugh, they joke, it's like old times. And Bojack expects that this is going to be the happy ending in his story with Herb. That even after all the turmoil and years of not speaking, he'd apologize and they'd bury the hatchet. He would be able to move on knowing that they reconnected. But life is not a sitcom. So, you're apologizing? Yes. I'm sorry. Okay. I don't forgive you. Herb, I said I'm sorry. Yeah and I do not forgive you. I think this pretty perfectly illustrates how Bojack and Family Guy both approach a really similar core principle in entirely different ways. In Family Guy, Peter's reverence for old sitcoms and those good old-fashioned values are essentially presented as an excuse for his bad behavior, Peter's justification for acting that way. And while the show often illustrates how comically wrong that kind of behavior can be, it still presents itself in a sitcom package, where at the end of 30 minutes, things do work out for everyone. Bojack, the character, doesn't approach the world through a sitcom lens because of his values or as a way to justify his bad behavior, it's because he's a stunted individual who was dealt some really rough cards as a child. Being the horse on Horse and Around was one of the only stable periods in his entire life. It's one of the only things he has to fall back on when navigating his real life issues and relationships. It's the only way he knows how to approach conflict, which obviously is not actually useful at all. And for that reason, we don't see happy sitcom endings in Bojack. We see lingering issues and consequences that don't get resolution until Bojack actually actually learns how to grow and deal with his problems in a healthy way. There are some other pretty wild connections between these series as well. Both have an episode that is primarily one character giving a monologue for the entirety of the episode in Bojack's Free Churro and Family Guy's Send In Stewie Please. Both have a near-death experience episode in Bojack's The View From Halfway Down and Family Guy's Are You There God It's Me Peter. Though obviously they're mostly just similar conceptually and because these shows are very different they approach these concepts very differently. I just really thought that this core idea is such an interesting connection between these shows, that they can have such a similar concept as a foundational aspect of their existence and both approach them in drastically different ways. It's honestly a testament to creativity. No idea can only be done one single way. And it's also fascinating how people's perceptions of shows can be so different. I bet most of you clicked this video thinking, those shows have nothing in common. And I wouldn't blame you, they are very different shows. But obviously, art in general is mostly about what the person experiencing that art gets out of it. Some people might be asked what Bojack is about and say, it's profound, that it's ironically the most human show on TV, that it helps people realize things about themselves that they couldn't verbalize. And some people might just say that it's normal words, but a horse guy. Johnny! I stay mellow watching Johnny two cellos. He talks cartoons, he's a really cool fellow. He keeps you posted on adult cartoons. If that's what you're into, then grab a spoon and a very big bowl of your favorite cereal. Feels like Saturday morning cartoon material. Johnny two cellos, watch him on YouTube. Now enjoy the screw and bust a move.